Hello my soccer universe. In round 8 of the 23-24 Austrian Bundesliga season, Lusk is hosting Hartberg. And while Hartberg is among the smallest, if not the smallest teams in the Austrian Bundesliga, and one might easily sneer at them for being like a small time a town team that is uh, punching above their weight, but ultimately is not that interesting. I actually beg to disagree. In my research for this video, I found quite a few interesting things that make this little club actually quite endearing, I have to say. So join me for the ride and let's look a little bit at Turn and Sportverein Hartberg. Now Hartberg is one of those what I usually call the village clubs. Uh, it sounds a little bit disparagingly, but you know, uh, you get the feeling. It is a small town team. Uh, Hartberg itself is in Oststeiermark or Eastern Styria, uh, a town of slightly less than 7,000 people. Uh, with a very nice historic center, and why do I mention it? Because if you watch Hartberg play in their stadium, the Profitil Arena, more on that a little bit uh, as well, you see swooping vistas of the town in the background, especially towards the right side of the camera angle, where you see the steeple of the local church. It actually has, has a quite nice center. And then, of course, the hillside where the town extends above to the left, there's, I think, what can only be a school. So uh, you get quite the Austrian traditional e experience of a stadium. This has, a, 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 you know, two stands, one main stand, one a, sm a much smaller one on the, on the other side with a running track around. And that's that. And of course, now that the Bonbons Liga, there are a few more, uh, you know, um, makeshift stands made that have to be converted as well. So in a way, not a very professional look overall. However, it is a very well run team. Now, internationally, Hartberg is definitely known for their overbearingly sponsored jerseys. And yes, it, it, it is true. This is just a blue jersey. Bang, 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 bang. Sponsor, 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 sponsor. The club's colors, of course, are blue and white. Nationally, Hartberg did not enter the kind of the scene until I would say the late 80s, uh, when they, you know, became a third level team most of the, of the, of the, of the time, but they had some uh, cup runs in there. However, they didn't make it into the professional time uh, in the, I think they did in the late 90s, but it didn't really get sustained uh, until the early 2010s. However, nowadays, this, this club is mostly known for one singular person, the president. Uh, beside being a well-run club, I think every, everyone respects them. But the media presence is definitely the president, the first female president in the Austrian Bundesliga, Brigitte Annal, who is also in a way their number one fan. And she also has, has a very ba uh, good backstory that I want to cover now when we talk a little bit about the fan base. <music> So, about the president, her name is Brigitte Annal and she's very much a self-made woman coming from very modest background in Vienna and is now uh, the CEO of a leading pharma com company whose top product is uh, the market leader against male infertility, which is called Profatil. Hence, the stadium is called also the Profatil Arena and you see this also as among their many, many sponsors on the shirt. She, after she uh, successfully got this business, I think she, she uh, crowned once or twice businesswoman of the year in Austria. She took over Hartberg as, you know, she knew people, she saw Hartberg, uh, she liked what she saw, she always liked uh, football. And she became the president in 2017. And since then, it has only been up, up, up. But she's not your typical president. She's not the one that will sit up in the VIP lounges. No, she's very much down to earth, very much there. And just two things, when Hartberg uh, for in the second Bundesliga season uh, in 1920 lost 5-1 at Lusk. However, due to other results, they were guaranteed a place in the, among the top six. So they had already achieved their goal for the season, which is not getting relegated. She was celebrating in the fan block with the fans pushing the drums. Also this season, uh, another really nice uh, picture that uh, shows how well the person she is. 
they were playing Wolfsburg and in the second half she just realized that the Hartberg fans were all in the sun and she just went over there and gave the smallish fan block um, 300 hundred euros and bought a round for everyone. She of course sent also when they got finally promo or when they got promoted to the Bundesliga, she financed an entire trip to Mallorca for the entire squad. You see, she's very much there. And while for some people her presence might be great thing, I honestly have 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 to say I do like her slightly down-to-earth persona very much, and she's very much the face of this team. Uh, and in a positive manner. What's more is um, the club is very, very, very well run and she makes sure that whoever is in charge of, of the club is also fits in personality with that club. So that's really, really cool. Overall, when we talk about the fan base in general, um, it is, of course, from a small town that has just, you know, over the past decade, some, uh, some small success. It is not a huge fan base. However, in the region, I think they're very well supported. Uh, it is... Sturm Graz territory in a, in, in, in a way because Hartberg is, is on the Autobahn corridor between uh, Graz and Vienna so it would be easy from, from there but through the success they have built a decent fan base one that also has quite some traveling support it has to be saying it also helps for them that they can develop some regional rival, r rivalries because in the southeastern corner of Austria there are now a total of four teams which are all within a uh, drivable distance that you can also get a good away support. Now Hartberg was founded in April of 1946 as Turn und Sportverein Hartberg, which is a little bit anachromatic in a way. Turnen was a huge thing in the German speaking world, which basically loosely translates to gym gymnastics, but it's so much more. But it's gymnastics and sports uh, club, and they still have uh, they have a volleyball division, they have a football division, they have uh, all the others uh, with judo, karate, then of course turn uh, turn and, and so on. So it's a, a, a typically a small town club where that hosts many many sports that got very successful in uh, in soccer slash football right there. Uh, as I said, for most of the time the team was amateur level. Uh, they reached kind of the top level of uh, Steiermark in the early 80s and in the late 80s they made a few, mid late 80s, uh, mid 90s, they made a few uh, cup runs reaching quarterfinals, reaching semifinals here, 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 here there. But uh, it was not until I see here 96 they, they got promoted to the second division for the first time where they stayed for roughly four seasons. Then again back to the third tier making here and there some appearances uh, but it wasn't until uh, to 2009 that they kind of established themselves in the second league but always on the bottom and then they got relegated. Rele rele There's some interesting stories in there that I want to dig deeper as well but they got relegated and this is when Fra Anal took over and they get promoted into the second league in um, 2017 under Christian Ilzer, who is now Sturm Graz coach and is probably one of the most interesting coaches from Austria, uh, who was who then immediately went over to other teams. Uh, I think he became the coach of Wolfsberg, uh, is quite successful there as well. And Markus Schopp uh, took over then in the Bundesliga. However, Let's go back to the season 17, 18, where they did get promoted. They only finished second in this season, uh, that, 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 that season and had to really wait to get their playing license. Because their stadium and the infrastructure around it was not Bundesliga level. Twice they were denied on the third try. Uh, the neutral uh, court basically gave them the license and they had to build up, they had to put in some mobile stands and so on. TV coverage had to update uh, floodlights and so on. Uh, from there on, they managed to stay in the league the first time around uh, in, in, in 11th spot. However, in 1920, we already mentioned that they finished fifth, meaning they qualified for the Europa Conference League. No, they qualified for the Europa League playoffs where they then were ousted by Piers Gliwice. Uh, kind of, it was tight, but it was uh, expected. They followed it up then with a seventh place finish where they then lost out in the, in, in, in the playoffs. And for the past season, they have been fighting against relegation, fin finishing in 11th and 10th respectively. 
However, they are at the moment, although a small club with a small budget, uh, they have established themselves in the Bundesliga as kind of a mainstay for now. This season, Hartberg had actually enjoyed a really good start and uh, probably dropped a few more points than you would have expected from them, to be honest. Um, especially first, they, they really look, look good and probably should have four points more in the standings that they do have. They got, again, a famous away win at Rapid already. Uh, I think the club is really well run. However, judging by the sponsors, they need money. And they need especially money because uh, the stadium can only be used for so long in the Bundesliga anymore. They, I think they have for one or two more years, they need to find a new place to play. And this is probably the biggest threat to their existence at this moment, which would be a shame because as I, as I said, while I don't find them a traditional Austrian Bundesliga team, the way that this club is run is actually quite well and this should be honored and I hope they will be able to build something there. The question is, of course, sustainability, let, let's say if Brigitte Arnold steps down or uh, some money because the club might fall as well back, which is very often what happened with town, uh, small town teams. Although there have also been uh, one or two in Austria that have been quite successful. <music> Now, when it comes to the rivalry with Lusk, of course, there is no natural rivalry there because, I mean, Eastern Steiermark uh, is very hard to reach from Linz. It's, it's actually quite some drive where you uh, basically have to make a detour via Vienna because of uh, geography. The Alps are kind of in between. Um, however, Hartberg is very much a really tough opponent for Lusk. Uh, that also has to be said uh, that they have not won a game against them since 2020. That was the Corona season. Uh, it is always a tough opponent. It's always a tough out. And especially at home, Hartberg have been a thorn in the side of Lusk. Of course, the overall, um, um, the overall head-to-head is relatively in Lusk's favors with 11 wins, 10 draws and 5 losses. However, there's a lot from the few uh, games that they had, uh, a total of 11 in the second league, where it's 6 uh, wins, 4 draws and 1 loss in the Bundesliga. It's much more level. 4 wins and all coming when Hartberg got promoted, 6 draws and 4 losses. Uh, there was, of course, also a 3-0 loss in last season at home, which was really looked bad. Uh, and then, you know, a very lucky 2-2 draw as well. So recently, Hartbeck has been a really, really tough ground to play against. Um, the other point of rivalry comes is that, of course, uh, ahead of the 21-22 uh, season, or during that one, Lusk bought some uh, good players from Hartberg, uh, namely... Um, Sasha Horvath, who is now a mainstay in the last midfield. Uh, they got also Florian Flecker. And then they got back Felix Lukene, who uh, grew up in Linz and, and so on, went for a few seasons uh, to Hartbeck and then uh, came back to Lask. So there, there is kind of, there was kind of a little bit that Lask is Hartberg. Um, is shopping at Hartberg and taking the best players out. out. There is not something that has been sustained. But there is, of course, a little rivalry because of that as well. Now ahead of this match and I'm shooting this before Hartberg played the seventh game uh, of the league. Um, as I said, Hartberg enjoyed a relatively good start to the league and I the early signs are that they will not necessarily be uh, implicated in the relegation scrap this time around. Uh, having quite some interesting uh, results, as I said, uh, one nil away win at Rapid. They uh, should have beaten Lusen in the first round. The uh, three three at Blauweiss Linz is also one that they threw away. They have a three nil away win against Wolfsburg. So uh, early signs are that Hartberg is should be taken seriously this time around. On the other hand, while the head to head does not speak for Lusk, this is a game that Lusk actually should win. This is a game where you may look at it as, as a last game with the ambitions that the club has. This should be three points. What does speak against the three points for Lusk? Well, it's on the back of playing Liverpool in the Europa League. And that will be interesting how that will work out. Uh, Hartberg have an entire week to prepare 
last only a few days, although it's two home games, so that might not be such a big thing. But having this big highlight and then going a level lower against Hardback might not work out all that well. But yeah, that finishes my little uh, profile of Hardback. I hope you enjoyed this video uh, and you learned a little, a little bit more about this club as well. Le let me know about any village clubs that you know. And yeah, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.